All righty. Howdy. Welcome to a brand new episode of Cannon Calls. This week, we have the opportunity to speak with a Chilean friend who is in town for the weekend. His name is Nathan Anderson, and Nathan is in town in order to interview Pastor Douglas Wilson for his Spanish documentary on postmillennialism. So Nathan is in studio to chat about that project and a little bit about himself. Thanks for listening, guys. Cheers. All right, welcome to another episode of Canon Calls. I'm your host, Jake McAtee, and this week we have a special guest, an international guest, all the way from Chile, Nathan Anderson. Welcome to the show, dude. Thanks. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah. First time in Moscow. Yeah. First, well, first time in Idaho. Okay. And, and yeah, I just flew into Washington okay. um, to visit some family and drove over here. Yeah. So introduce yourself, man. I just met you yesterday. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so help everybody else catch up. You are in Chile. Yeah. So my name is Nathan Anderson. I live in uh, the small town of Pichilemu, Chile in South America. And, um, yeah, with my, uh, wife, we work down there, um, with a, with a missionary group and, um, work in a discipleship school and with our local church and a number of other uh, different things. Nice, man. And you left out, like, I feel like the coolest one, which is the Uh, surfing one. Yeah. I also work with a group called Christian Surfers and yeah, we do a bunch of different things, outreach to the surf community down in Chile. That's awesome, man. Those mm-hmm. have to be the coolest Christians to work with, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm really thankful to the Lord just for the opportunities I've had to, yeah, do ministry down in Chile and in these different areas. Yeah, man. So you came into Moscow for one reason, and that is. Yeah, I'm interviewing uh, Pastor Douglas Wilson in a few hours. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm making a, for a film that I'm working on, I'm working on a film on the topic of, um, eschatology, the end times, the future of the church and yeah, just what's going to happen. That's awesome, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this podcast is quickly becoming the eschatology interview podcast. Uh, we recently had Gary DeMar on and so, but you are doing a full blown documentary, uh, that's targeted towards the Spanish speaking, uh, Mm -hmm. world. One thing I asked Gary uh, a couple of weeks ago was, you know, what, what is he, you know, not too long ago, we could definitely tell that it's, it's dispensationalism is the big, you know, Goliath out there, uh, mm-hmm. on the run from the rapture. Uh, when you make this documentary, what are, what is, the, what, are, what are you going after? What's your target? Yeah. So in South, I think in Chile and I, it'd probably be safe to say in South America in general, most of the Christians, evangelicals are, you know, influenced by the Pentecostal movement in one way or another. And pretty, most of them, or almost all of them, are influenced by a dispensational view of the end times of eschatology. And so um, you, they're, you know, they believe in a pre-tribulational rapture and, um, you know, a seven-year tribulation period and, and the, you know, that Christ is going to reign a thousand years, you know, a premillennial view, basically. Okay, so it's like right up the middle, the mm-hmm. Left Behind series yep. featuring Nicolas Cage. Exactly. Nice. All the way. <laughs> and so that's just the common view. And, you know, there's a little bit of people, you know, tr- um, translating some books about amillennialism. And that's yep. like, just, there's just a little bit of that. People know about that. But postmillennialism, which is the view that I'm going to be mostly presenting on in the movie that I'm making, okay. is, I would say, virtually unknown in the okay. Spanish-speaking world in a lot of ways. Okay. And if it is known, it you know, there might be a little blog article here and there that kind of talks about it but even that like some of them that i've i've read it just by googling it in, in spanish is you know a lot of the articles um are very inaccurate in terms of oh, the wow. way they even present the view so okay um so, i imagine yeah. a lot of those are probably just differentiating it from the view it's actually advocating for it too so it's probably not even a full-blown no no there's just like a few yeah a few and, and I, again, I, I would say you can't not, at least when I was, you know, cause I, I've taught a few classes and done a few things on this, looking for some information to interact with as well. And yeah, there just wasn't hardly anything out there. And right now, as of 
today, as far as I know, in terms of like literature, the only uh, kind of, you know, well, it, it, even it, like post-millennial books um, that are even available in Spanish, as far as I know, at least, that really talk about the issue of eschatology are, you know, David Chilton's books. Like I think Paradise Restored and Days of Vengeance are somewhere around the internet on PDF, not okay. even in print, but just right. around the internet somewhere. Right. right. The dark web. Yeah. The Christian post mill dark web. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, dude. So real quick, can you, so when I had Gary on, it really was more about, uh, preterism. Mm-hmm. So he's done a ton of work in Matthew 24 and we talked all about that. Um, but you, you are go, your documentary, I think has a wider scope. Mm-hmm. It's about po- the post-millennial vision. Can you talk about what that is? Yeah. So I've, you know, studied the issue of, of preterism probably for, for a, a long time and was introduced to that even before, you know, really considering the issue of post-millennialism. And I think it's a really interesting subject, but it's also a, a really vast subject, like, sure. you know, going through the book of Revelation verse by verse, or, you know, even the, the, uh, all of it discourse and the different passages, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a big topic in and of itself. And so at least with this documentary, I'm not so much trying to go that direction, okay. though I don't know how I'm going to avoid that, but it's probably going to come up in at some uh, level or another during the film. With much skill. Yeah, just, <laughs> you know, not because I, you know, not because it's a, it's, it's not an important subject. It is an right. important subject, but because we could kind of, you know, lose the, the forest and the trees in just focusing on that one point and, and ignore the greater issue of, you know, what, is the future of the church like what when Jesus called his disciples in the great commission to disciple the nations like what did he expect from them and what did he expect that to accomplish ultimately That's will the nations be discipled or is it just like you know kind of was it just something that he told them to do knowing you know that they weren't going to accomplish it basically so it it in terms of differentiating they're not separate things so what uh the partial preterist position is that most of the um, kind of the apocalyptic texts in mm-hmm. the New Testament and in the Old uh, reference uh, AD 70. Yeah. The events uh, where Rome came in, sacked Jerusalem, mm-hmm. knocked out the temple. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of related to postmillennialism. It's not separate, but y- you want to talk about um, the contents of the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. What does Jesus expect of his disciples to do? Yeah. And really also you know, go towards all these promises that we have in, especially in the Old Testament of, you know, a a coming time, you know, when the earth will be filled with the knowledge, you know, of the Lord as the waters covers the sea, you know, and when is that time? You know, the, the, I feel like the, the premillennialists say, well, that's when Jesus is reigning literally from Jerusalem on earth, you know, and I don't totally know what amillennia is, how they respond to some of these specific passages. And, you know, there, there are some spiritual aspects I understand to some of these things. Um, but yeah, well, basically what do we do with all these passages that speak of periods of blessings on the earth to God's people in time when they're, you know, while there's generations still like Psalm 72 and the moon is still there and, you know, the sun and all these things. So um, how do we understand those passages and how do they fit in with a view, especially if we assume, as premillennialists do, that the end times will be a period of actually, you know, great, you know, gloom and doom in a lot of ways, you know? Right. And um, on the other hand, you know, amillennialists kind of have a little, you know, better hermeneutic in certain ways, but they still believe that, you know, the final days will be uh, a time of great apostasy and in in a great falling away, basically. So when you talk about this and like when you go to make this documentary, do you see any practical, immediately practical things about um, the doctrine you're looking to really hash out and mm-hmm. cast a vision for? Well, I think it's actually interesting. And, and I, I start out my, uh, well, at least that's the plan so far. I start out my film a little bit talking about the fact that everybody has an eschatology. Like not only Christians, like, you know, atheists have an eschatology. 
uh, you know, every religion and every, you know, everybody has an idea of what the future looks like. I mean, we have all these famous people today saying, you know, you know we shouldn't have kids because the world's, you know, going to hell in a handbasket, basically. Yeah. Even though they're not Christians and they don't have any, you know, of that, those kind of views, they do have a view about the future. And so I think it's a, it's a very important topic because it, it will affect how you live your life. What you think the future holds That's good. will, you know, affect your reality today. It really seems like um, even just the circles I grew up in, this would be more of a, you know, who's to say issue. And it seems yeah. like a lot of, you got to compare texts. But what you're actually saying is like, no, you, everyone is already acting on their eschatology. Mm-hmm. They already have one. Yeah. And they, you, it's your job with this documentary to make people, you know, to make these fish understand they swim in water mm-hmm. and yeah. then present to you, you know, what you think is really the biblical uh, eschatology. Yeah. And so I think in kind of the evangelical world, for the most part, there's two kinds of people. There's some people that are really into eschatology and they're, you know, very, you know, into looking at the signs and yeah. these things and that, you know. The fulfillments and that what's happening in the Middle East and all this. They've got now, charts. Yeah. And then there's another group of people out there. I feel like they can't really refute these guys. Like they don't, they don't maybe understand the text as much to like, they're like, yeah, you might be right, but I'm just more of a pan millennialist. I'm just kind of like, I just want to live my life, man. You know, I don't, I don't know what all, what you're talking about so much over there. Yeah. It's probably going to happen, but. I'm not going to think about it too much. You got to finish the pan millennialist joke. Yeah. Oh, the the old joke was um, uh, pan millennialist is that, you know, I'm not a amillennialist, premillennialist, postmillennialist. I'm a pan millennialist because ultimately everything's just going to pan out in the end. Jesus is going to come back someday and it's all good. Right. Which is not false. It's no, just it's, lazy. It's true. But, <laughs> but there is a little bit more that God has revealed to us. 100%. About it. And that's not to say that the end, you know, that scripture isn't mysterious in a lot of ways and that there aren't hard passages and hard things to understand. That's true. But even with all of that, I think the, the, the simple proposition or the main proposition of, of, of post-millennialism is that ultimately, you know, the church will be successful in what Jesus called us to do on earth right. before he returns, basically. Now, uh, yesterday we were talking and you told me that uh, you had recently made a decision to take your documentary and and limit the scope a bit to um, sort of your journey Mm -hmm. to this particular position. So do you mind kind of taking us through like a little bit about who you are and how you ended up here? Yeah. So um, I, I, you know, have grown up in kind of, you know, neo-evangelical circles and, um, we're part of a, a non-denominational kind of organization, so I've I've been to different churches and involved yeah. with, and and honestly, my parents were never, you know, they were never huge on on eschatology. You know, they did kind of have a you know some, um, you know, study in terms of the Book of Revelation and had kind of a idealist, you know, like like idealism, like Revelation is talking about general things, not so yeah. much specific things. So they weren't like, you know, they weren't like hardcore dispensationalists sure. in that sense growing up, sure. but just living in that evangelical culture, obviously you kind of imbibe those, those ideas about the rapture and, and these things, you know, and I still remember, you know, like a, a friend who was a Christian rapper and he had this song about the rapture and, and that just, you know, stuck in my head when I was, when I was younger. And I still, and at one point I, I was, I remember reading, um, the Left Behind series, like actually, I think I mostly listened to it on audiobook because we were traveling a lot, and I was like, I don't, I got through a few of them. I don't remember what book exactly, but there's a lot. There was, it's a long series. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I had these kind of general ideas about um, eschatology, and just kind of assumed what what everybody believed around me. You know, I didn't yeah. even know it was a so much an issue up for debate in many sense. Right. So then, then what? So then I was introduced to um, a, a Bible teacher named Steve Gregg, who was um, also friends with my parents. And he had a series, you know, on the Olivet Discourse. And he was, uh, you know, came from a, you know, Calvary Chapel background. So, um, so from a dispensational view. And, um, and he started talking about, you know, the Olivet Discourse and the Book of Revelation. 
from a partial preterist view. And so I found that to be very interesting, the idea that um, actually a lot of these things that we're assuming are talking about this future tribulation um, were fulfilled, in, as, as you said before, in the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. So I started listening to this, and then he, I also um, he edited a commentary that's called Revelation 4 Views, okay. and that commentary actually, you know, gives a, 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 goes verse by verse through the whole book and puts like four different columns side by side and gives a summary of the different views, you know, and you could, it's great because you look at it side by side and kind of get a general idea. And so through that um, commentary, I, I read through that commentary and was um, introduced to a number of different authors, just reading that, like David Chilton or Kenneth Gentry. Um, um, I think maybe even Gary DeMar might, might be in there a bit. And so, um, that, you know, led me to, to read, um, Ken Gentry's book before Jerusalem fell, which talks about the dating of the book of revelation okay. and, okay. and yeah, and then I just went from there and have, you know, been studying that. That was probably about, you know, 11 years ago or something like that. So it's wow. been a while. So you've been, this has been stewing for a while. Yeah. This has been a topic of interest to me for, for a long time. And, and so that whole side, you know, because um, Steve Gregg's view, I guess it would be more of a, well, a partial preterist view of, of Revelation for the most part, but also a, you know, amillennial kind of view in, in terms of, um, in terms of the millennium question. And, okay. and so, um, or he would, he might even call himself like an optimistic um, amillennialist or something like that. So I was kind of introduced to that. But I wasn't, you know, and there, I, I did, you know, there was a section on post-millennialism, but I, it didn't really, you know, catch my interest that much at that moment. But I remember later on, at another point, I, um, I listened to Pastor Doug Wilson's, uh, a sermon series uh, from Canon Press here. Um, okay. I, that was on the subject of post-millennialism. You mentioned it was in the audio store. I think. Yeah, it's it was... in the audio store. It's, it's an older one because I know he kind of redid it, I guess, like in okay. recent years. Okay. Or or covered some of the same, you know, material. Okay. But do you remember what it was called? Um, I I know the cover says like uh, you know um, from the river to the ends of the earth. Okay. So I don't know if that I don't think that was the title of the series, but that okay. was at least on the cover. I will put in the show notes a ton of links. I know mm -hmm. you sent me several links to the to the doc last night, but yeah. I'll try to put everything in there. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly enough, as we talked about yesterday, Doug Wilson actually debated. Yeah, uh, Steve Gregg on Steve Calvinism. Gregg on, so. Yeah, Arminianism, Calvinism. Yeah, that I think is also in the audio store. And if not, I know it's on YouTube. I think. Uh huh. So yeah. Anyway, great stuff. Yeah, and so um, so. It's interesting because, you know, listening to Steve Gregg and all that kind of led me to consider, you know, partial preterism. And so that whole issue of, you know, are all these, you know, catastrophes talking about the end of days or are they talking about things that are now past for us? That I kind of had dealt with a lot of that stuff already. Okay. But just listening to, um, you know, how Pastor Wilson expounded the passages, you know, um, you know, from the Old Testament, like Psalm 110 and, um, right. you know, Psalm 72, or even dealing with issues like, you know, what does it mean, you know, that Christ came to save the world, you know? Yeah. And how does that, you know, how does that work even proportionally, you know, if we only believe that a small fragment of humanity and all of history will be saved? Right. And so, so yeah, those um, lectures really opened my eyes to this whole issue of, post-millennialism. And then I, I also, yeah, I've also read like, um, Ken Gentry and Keith Matheson has a really good book on post-millennialism as okay. well. Okay. And yeah, that's kind of what led me here. Yeah. And so you showed up at Moscow for Saturday. Yeah. I showed up on Saturday. It's Monday. It's Monday now yeah, and yeah. I'm heading out tomorrow morning. Been that's out. right, man. That's awesome. Okay. So, uh, and you're, you are interviewing Pastor Wilson today. Yeah. Yeah, okay, a, you got a, a two-hour interview. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Do you have your questions ready? I hope so. I have a lot of questions. I don't know if we're gonna <laughs> get to them all. In the, I'm hoping, you know, the other problem is my camera, you know, only records for thirty minutes, so I have to record thirty minutes, pause, and you yeah, know, yeah, start yeah. over. So that's that might slow things down a little bit, but yeah, hopefully, we'll get to at least some of the main issues. You know, the um, 
regarding post-millennialism. Awesome. Awesome. Um, now, a huge aspect of this the, of interest, I think, is that you are intending this, as we mentioned, for the Spanish-speaking audience. Yeah. So do you have any guests? Like, are you, how do you think this will be received? Honestly, um, I'm not totally sure. Like, we do a, a podcast as well, and, and on our podcast, we've talked about, you know, post-millennialism and, and yeah. some of these aspects. We even did a, a little radio debate on Matthew 24 a while back. Okay. And, you know, it was kind of a, a, a mixed reception. There's people that are listening. I remember one person was commenting like, man, you guys are just, you know, you're just stirring the pot. You're just causing trouble, you know? Like, why would you bring these things up? It, you yeah. know, and we all know that, you know, everybody believes the same thing about this. Don't you know? Kind of a, yeah. an idea when actually that's not true. And we sometimes have a very provincial view of even of theology just because that's what we've always heard or that's what everyone around us has been taught. Right. But it's, it's also interesting from a historical perspective, and I hope to cover that in the documentary that, you know, it's not like everybody throughout church history, you know, believed in the rapture and all, and, 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 you know, a seven year tribulation and all the rest. It, it's right. people have had different views about these things. And so it, it's not that the, you guys are the weird ones, but mm-hmm. it, with the historical scope, they're the weird ones. Yeah. You know, that would be, that would actually think this is what the church has always thought. Um, or that, that, you know, we've, after all those wrong things, we've culminated in the right one with premillennial dispensationalism. Yeah. I mean, obviously the, the historical argument, you know, in some ways it's, it's not saying that, oh, because, you know, in the 1800s, you know, Darby came along with this new idea that no one had ever heard before. That means it's wrong. We're not right, saying that, right, 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 obviously, but we are saying that we have to take it with a grain of salt, understanding, you know, for hundreds and thousands of years before Darby, Christians did not believe what he believed. And they, right. you know, had the Bible as well. And Jonathan Edwards believed it, which means, you know, yeah. it's probably just right on its face. That means we win. You know? Yeah, no, there's Jonathan no investigation Edwards. necessary. You should just bring a picture of Jonathan Edwards and maybe just leave it there. Pretty much. That's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, uh, so you're thinking this could either be a dumpster fire where nobody really cares too much for it or... It could go really well. Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm. I'm. It's just something that I. I just really feel um, called to do, and so you know, whatever the Lord does with it, I'm. I'm fine with that. Just, I'm just gonna throw it out there and. What, what, and see I'm what curious happens. to know what is the state of Christian media in the Spanish-speaking world. Um, well, obviously, with you know all the resources we have through social media and how it's so accessible today, you know, there are different, you know, young people popping up and doing um, media, but I, I would say it's not that huge at this moment. Even the whole podcast world, like, um, I don't feel like most people have really tuned in to the idea of, um, of podcasting and of listening to podcasts and, sure. and all the rest. And so I had a friend I was talking to about our podcast um, and, you know, um, kind of got him, got him, uh, connected with, you know, you know, through Spotify or whatever. And he started sure. listening. He was like, man, this is great. I could, you know, be working in my, you know, my house doing this and that and listening to something at the same time. But, um, yeah, that's not a real common thing at this moment, at okay. least still. Okay. So you're, you're a trailblazer. Well, we're trying to, to use all the resources that, that are at our disposal, you know, totally. And just, yeah, do it the best we can with what we have. Awesome. So with your home, you said, you mentioned you have a local church you're a part of uh-huh. and a few other ministries that you, you do. Yeah. Are you, are you the weird one there? Um, I, I get, probably depends on who you ask, <laughs> but, um, uh, probably. <laughs> okay. So you, I mean, like, as far as, uh, would you say even in just like your local body, is this, are these doctrines believed or, you know, are you kind of the black sheep there too? Well, yeah, I think a lot of these things, like when I've preached on these subjects and or talked about these subjects, a lot of people, you know, have never heard of it yeah. before, you know? Yeah. And, you know, some people react kind of strongly to it, but usually those are people that have kind of grown up in, in sure. a church context and, you know, had years in this. But uh, I've also talked to people that are, you know, new Christians or, you know, just um, recently understanding Christianity and that part's, it's not that 
complicated sure, for them. Sure. Right, it's like, right, right. okay, so yeah, correct. And, and it's, <clears throat> it's, sorry, it's kind of funny uh, when people like think of post-millennialism or, uh, or these ideas as something like dangerous. It's like, ooh, you know, we don't want to, yeah, it, it's so dangerous to think that we might actually win, you know? Right, right, right. right. We need to be thinking that we're going to lose because that's the best way to move forward. Yeah. Basically. So Evangelicals it, are, we're, we're fantastic at being chased around. Mm-hmm. I feel like we, we really uh, thrive on the periphery, mm-hmm. you know, on the yeah. margins. That's where we love to be. Um, so I, I'm even curious, though, with your elders. Like, I mean, I know that you mentioned it's kind of a, uh, mm-hmm. toss up as far as whoever's listening to you preach or talk uh-huh. about them. But what about your elders? Like, is this, well, you know, we'll, we'll see, I guess. I mean, <laughs> honestly, okay. cause again, like, like sometimes you talk to people about these things and they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, you know, a while back there, but well, wait, you, you said what exactly, yeah, 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 you know? Right. So, right. I mean, all I could say is so far so good. I haven't okay. really had any big, big issues with, with anybody um, okay, about great. these things. I haven't been, you know, called a heretic and, sure. you know, condemned by You're still anybody. taking communion with your local body? Yes. <laughs> okay, good, 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 man. Good. Well, then, therefore, go fight, win, yeah. you know? Thanks. Tear it up. Um, now, uh, so one of the benefits I thought of, like, I wanted to make sure, because um, like I said, I know with my family, we, I have people in mind immediately who I can think of we should get this, like, resources to. Mm-hmm. So where, where's the best places we can find you and news about your doc? Yeah, so um, so I have a website that I, it's a blog that I've been running for a number of years and writing articles in Spanish, okay. and also some translated articles as well. Uh, it's called Esperanza en lo Invisible and dot dot com. Okay. It, which, you know, <laughs> I totally got the last part. Yeah, um, which means in in English means ho- a hope unseen, basically. Okay. And yeah, that's where, you know, for a number of years I, I've blogged there. And then we also, a few years ago with the pastor of my church, we started a podcast. And so that's where you could find, um, a lot of those resources that are more related to like apologetics and theology and current events and all that. The whole Christian life. Yeah. And so that's where I have, uh, those kind of resources. And right now, um, for the movies called, um, En la tierra como en el cielo, which is on earth as it is in heaven. Awesome. And I have a Facebook page right now with the trailer there that you guys can uh, check out. And I'm going to, uh, I need to build the website, you know, at some point. Okay. But I, but that will be, I have the, the I think it's en la tierra como en el cielo um, dot com, basically. Awesome. Awesome. And, and I think you got me the majority of those links. Yeah. Make sure if there's anything else, please send me those and I'll get them in the show notes. Okay, for sure. And uh, folks can find uh, find out your stuff and then we can get behind this project. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Nathan, thank you so much. Uh, we'll get out of this hot box. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. 